Brothers, it's just such a joy to be with you here today and to be back in the Carolinas. I'm not too far from here. I was born in Charlotte, about a two-hour drive, so it's good to be back. I live in Nashville, Tennessee now. And uh, today I'm going to be talking a little bit about personal witnessing. I hope you'll be encouraged by that. I just am so thankful for all the messages and just that great reminder to, to run and, and to finish the race. Um, about 2007, I came to a point in my life where I just surrendered everything to the Lord. And uh, God filled me with His presence. And in the, that moment, I realized, you know what? Heaven is real. <laughs> God is real. And I don't want to waste time. I want to store as many treasures as I can in God's hands. And so to do that, I found out very early on that I, I would have to abide in the vine. Uh, God says in his word in John chapter 15, verse five, if we want to bear fruit. What's our job? We've got to abide in him and him in us, because he says so clearly, guess what? Apart from him, we can do nothing. Right. And so it's got to be about him. Uh, God moved on my life very quickly. I remember about a year later, I joined the Gideons International, had no idea what God was going to do in and through that work for me and all the, the great blessings that I would get to experience. I was a busy guy running an insurance agency, just getting it off the ground, had about nine agents. And I thought, man, I don't know how much I can do in all these activities, but if nothing else, I'll get my hands on some of these testaments and give them out and let God use me in my daily life, my walk with him in the course of my my normal business. So I remember I got one of these and I said, you know what, God, I'm going to I'm going to just share the gospel. You give me these opportunities. I'm going to go and do that. And so I had an insurance agency office in in South Charlotte, kind of near the South Park area. And I went on my lunch break and I said, "Okay, God, (laughs) I got the Testament. If you'll show me who to give this to, I'll do it. And I went across the street into the grocery store and they had kind of a deli counter there. And uh, I just walked into that grocery store. And brothers, if you could have seen my eyes, they were about this big because I'm thinking, who is it, Lord? <laughs> Who do you want me to give this to? And I go in there and I get my sandwich and I'm looking around, looking around. I go to check out at the checkout counter and I'm just continuing to look around. And, and by the time I left, I just felt disappointed. And I got to thinking, man, did I miss it? <laughs> did I miss that opportunity? Did I, did I overlook that, that chance to share the gospel with someone that God had put in my path? And And I'll be honest, I I went out into the parking lot and I'm walking to my car and I felt totally discouraged. And I just thought, man, that's a bummer. And I almost go to my car and I'm opening up the door handle on my car door. And I want to share with you what God did in my life. In that moment, I felt compelled to turn around. And when I turned around, I locked eyes with this man coming out of that grocery store. Now, he must have been 100, 150 Uh, feet away. I mean, he was far away, but I immediately knew him. And so I got nervous. (laughs) I started thinking, oh, Lord, you know my heart, you know uh, my strengths, my weaknesses. I don't want to mess this up. So I put my sandwich in the car and I got my testament and I start walking over to this guy and I'm praying and I'm saying, Lord, you're going to have to take care of this. And by the time I caught up to him, I was probably about two aisles over in the parking lot. And to make matters worse, this was a big guy (laughs) and I'm kind of a smaller guy. And I'm thinking, man, this is already nerve wracking. I don't know what to do, but I'm just praying. And I kind of tap him on the back of his shoulder. And he just turns around and looks at me and gives me this weird look like, what do you want? And so I just looked back up at him and I said, sir, I just have a gift for you. I want to give this to you. It's a copy of the word of God. And he took it. And I thought, oh, thank you, Lord. (laughs) And praise God. But you know what? In that moment, the Lord began to deal with me. And he said, Reza, keep going. And so I said, hey, I want to show you something. Let me share something with you. And I I just walked him right through the back of the Testament. It was so easy and simple. I just said, hey, let me share with you that God loves you. That we're all sinners. God made a remedy for that sin. He sent his son, Jesus. And you can receive him as your Lord and Savior. And there's even a place for you to sign it and date it. And I just want you to have it. And he said, okay, thank you. And I thought that was it. I said, thank you, Lord. And God began to continue to deal with me. And he pressed, pressed me forward. And I said, well, you know, this is really between you and God. It's totally between you and God. But if you want, I'm willing to pray with you. Have you ever done that before? And he said, no, no, I've never done that before. I, I'm, I'm a good guy. I try to treat people with respect, but no, I've never done that before. And I said, well, he said, it's between you and God. But if you want, I'd be willing to pray with you. And I'll never forget because he looked down at that testament in his hand and his eyebrows kind of got wadded up and he just stared at it. And it was kind of like this long, awkward pause. 
And I'm thinking, what's going to happen, you know? And he just looks at it. And then he looked back at me. He said, okay, let's do it. And right then and there, we bowed our heads in the middle of a busy grocery store parking lot with grocery, people pushing grocery carts and cars driving by. And we bowed our heads and we prayed for him to receive Jesus as his Savior, to ask God to forgive him of his sins, to fill him with the Holy Spirit, that he would follow him for the rest of his life. I remember after saying that prayer and just sensing the presence of God, I looked up and he looked up at me and he said something that I'll never forget. He said, you have no idea how long I have needed to do that. And so I got back in my car and I remember leaving and I'm driving away and I saw him out of the side window and I just kind of nodded and waved to him and he did like this, thank you, like that. And so it turned from a weird, what do you want face to a thank you. And brothers, I remember driving back to my office and I sat in my car with tears streaming down my face because I could not believe that the God of heaven would use what I would consider to be a, a goofball like myself to be a part of his eternally significant redemptive work to draw somebody to himself. Because when he looked at me and said, you have no idea how long I've needed to do that, he was right. I didn't have a clue. But God knew. And so that moment in that day, brothers, what I learned that it it wasn't about me. (laughs) It was about God. See, God does the work. He just allows us to be a part of it. Our job is to be prayerful and willing and sensitive to the Holy Spirit. And as God leads us, just to respond by faith. I want to encourage you today. I mean, there's brothers just sitting right here in this room. You, there might be some of you that say, man, that's no problem for me. I can give out a word of witness and share the gospel. God gives me opportunities. I'll do this all day long. I'll, I'll talk to the wall <laughs> if, if I could. But there might be other brothers in this room that you might think, man, that's hard. That's challenging. That's daunting. I'm not a people person. I might be an introvert. I might not be used to talking and engaging and dialoguing with folks. But I just want to encourage you, when the Lord prompts you, he's faithful. He'll take care of those opportunities, but we have to be in tune with the Lord. That's why I really appreciate the the message on the spiritual integrity and and maintaining our walk with the Lord. Because as we decrease and as he increases in and through us and we have that intimacy with the Lord to just hear from him, we can just respond by faith and watch him do all the work and watch him receive all the honor and the glory. I remember for myself early on in my walk, that was so important for me, that that gift of discernment, hearing from God. I mean, it's it's the most important thing. I would pray and fast and say, God, I've got to hear from you. Help me to learn what that what that sounds like to hear your voice, to know that I know that I know that it's you. Because the danger is sometimes we can even get caught up doing good things that we might feel is good or the right thing, but it might not necessarily be of the Lord. And we've got to make sure we're hearing from God. One time I was praying and fasting. I went out on the streets downtown Charlotte and I'm giving out testaments saying, God, you show me who to give them to and and witness to. I'll do it. And one time I was leading a man to Jesus. I mean, what more important thing could you ever imagine doing on earth than leading somebody to the Lord? But as I'm leading him to the Lord, another man comes walking by and the spirit of God says, no, him. And so I disengaged and I began to share the gospel with this man walking by. Shared the gospel with him, and, and he accepted Jesus right on the spot. And he said, man, I feel so much better. Let me share with you about me. I'm not from Charlotte. I'm from New York. My name is Alonzo. I've gone through abuse as a kid. And finally today, I just said, you know what? Enough's enough. I can't handle this life anymore. He had found out that um, he lost his child. And he said, today's the day. And so he said, I'm gonna, I was going to go commit suicide. And I didn't want to do it right out here in the middle of the street. So I'm looking for a park to go kill myself. And I, he was literally walking two blocks to the park. And God divinely allowed me to be right there to share the God. He even pulled out the rope he was going to strangle himself with. And so, again, my eyes began to be open. And, I, and I'm thinking, wow, how many people in this world around us are hurting Think about the oppression that people are going through, the pain, thoughts of hopelessness and despair and suicide and anxiety and addictions and all kinds of things. And yet we have the we have the answer. It's the it's the the hope of glory. Jesus. 
And so I don't know about you, but I want to bear fruit. I want to bear a lot of fruit for the Lord. He says in his word, you know, some of that seed falls on good ground, right? It goes forth bearing fruit 30, 60, 100 fold. I want to do that. But in order to do that and to make sure it's fruit that remains, we must abide in the Lord. And there's so much comfort knowing that it's not about us. It's about God doing it in and through us. So we don't have to rely on our own strengths and talents and abilities. God does that. He just lets us be a part of it. Also, don't doubt the influence that you have on folks that are around you. People that are in your camps. People that you can encourage in their walk, in their personal witnessing. I remember there was a couple that came out with us in Dallas at the International Convention. We do a witness in action, personal witnessing during the lunchtime. And I'll never forget this dear couple, Bob and Shelly Ross. The husband's name was Bob Ross, kind of like the painter, right? And they were out of Sacramento, and, and they were with us, and they just said, Rez, we're not really used to sharing the gospel. Can we just come tag along and watch and pray? I said, yeah, absolutely. Well, it's not, it's not about us. It's about the Lord. We've got to ask God what He wants. And so we began to pray, and we went out on the streets of Dallas that day, and God gave us a divine appointment. And I began to share the gospel with this man right on the sidewalk, and with tears streaming down his face that were literally hitting the sidewalk. He prayed to receive Christ. And this couple, Bob and Shelley Ross, they couldn't believe it. They were just watching. They watched God do that. Right after that, a lady comes walking up, and without saying a word to her, she says, I need Jesus. Now, I've been sharing the gospel a lot, but I've never had somebody just come right up and say, I need Jesus, without saying a word. I mean, that's God, right? And so I looked at Shelley. I said, Shelley, it's your turn. Please lead her to the Lord. And so Shelly right there, we, she shared the gospel with her and walked her through the plan of salvation. And, and they bowed their heads and they prayed to receive Jesus. And Shelly, in that moment, the light bulb went off because she realized, you know what? <laughs> there is nothing for me to worry about. It's all God. And she lit up. If you could have only seen her, she began to go tell everybody about Jesus. Bob looked at me and says, what has happened to my wife? <laughs> And she got the fire because, again, she realized that it wasn't about looking inwards. It was about looking to the king and watching him use her. Since then, she's gone on to launch her own street ministry in Sacramento, California. And I just get humbled and excited to see how God grows others that he allows to be put in our path. So I just wanted to encourage you with that. Don't doubt not only your walk and your testimony and how God can use you, uh, but also how he might use you to help pour into others. You know, the scripture says some plant, some water, but it's God that gives the increase. We don't know what people are going through in their life. We don't know how they're hurting. We don't know if we're planting sometimes, watering sometimes. Folks might have known the Lord, maybe backslidden and coming back, or maybe it's the first time they're receiving Christ. One of the things that I really love about our Testament is not only the plan of salvation that makes it so easy, we can walk them right through it, but those helps that are in the front. And just showing folks places where they can find the scriptures. So many people, even even believers, they don't they're not familiar with the word of God. They don't know where to go to find their help in time of need. And so by God's grace, as I've had opportunities to to plant and water those seeds, sometimes I'll even pray. I'll say, Lord, just put my finger on whatever it is (laughs) that maybe they're dealing with. And it's fun watching the Lord minister to people because it's his word. He's honoring his word and he's loving on them and drawing them to himself. There's been situations where my finger would land on something and I'm thinking, oh, man, I just messed that up. I was on a flight and there was a guy beside me in a nice business suit. He's all buttoned up and and my finger landed on addiction. And I'm thinking, well, oops, (laughs) messed that up. And then after about a 30 minute conversation, he shares with me that he's recovering from a cocaine addiction. And I'm thinking, wow, thank you, Lord. A few months ago, we were in New York City for the for the Bible Blitz, and we were going out doing personal witnessing um, on, I think, Sunday afternoon. And I had one little testament left. And I said, Lord, this is, this is why I'm sharing this. I learned experientially, so hopefully uh, this is going to encourage you too. But I said, Lord, I'm down to just this one little testament. And I'm looking around New York City, and there's millions of people, and I'm thinking, what difference can I make? And the Lord spoke to me, and he said, don't you know what you have in your hand? And I said, wow, you're right, Lord. You just put me where you want me. And God directed me to sit beside this, this lady on a park bench. And after talking about the weather and sharing some casual conversation, I opened up the Testament and I began to share with her and I put my finger and, and the word suicide came out. And I'm thinking, wow, that's pretty heavy to talk to with someone that you just met. 
And uh, after a few minutes in conversation, she shared with me that she lived alone. And at nighttime, she would literally see demons in her visions telling her to kill herself. And so what did we do? We prayed. And it was an honor and a joy for, for me to pray with her, to dedicate her life to the Lord and to receive deliverance from that. And I remember afterwards, she looked at me and she said, how in the world did you know to come and sit down next to me and talk to me about this? And I said, ma'am, it was God. All I did was say a simple prayer. And so my encouragement for you today, brothers, is don't doubt the divine appointments that the Lord will put around you. And as you stay sensitive and yielding to the Holy Spirit, watch God prompt you and watch that journey that he'll take you on. I mean, it's, it's beyond our imagination how God will use us, not because of, of us, but because of his love for others. And as he's drawing them to himself, you know, Paul, I look at the Apostle Paul and and God used him so significantly in evangelism work and starting these churches. And and so when he writes something, I'm thinking it's probably pretty good to pay attention to it. And there's a few verses that he pens in the book of Colossians in chapter four, starting in verse two through verse six. And it's just four little verses. And sometimes it's easy just to scan through verses, but These four verses are so meaty, and basically what he's saying is to continue in prayer earnestly. And then he basically outlines his personal prayer request, and he says, pray for me that God would open a door for the revealing of the mystery of the gospel for which I'm in chains, that I might speak as I ought to, that I would walk in wisdom towards those that are on the outside, redeeming the time. That my speech might be filled with grace and seasoned with salt, that I would know how to answer each one. And so that's a pretty articulate prayer request. But really all he's saying is pray that God would open the door and give me the words to say. (laughs) And so if you'll start praying that prayer that Paul outlines right here, you'll start seeing, wow, God will honor that prayer. Basically, Lord, you do it. Help me to be obedient. Give me the words to say. And right in the middle, I want to just close with, with that one verse where he says, redeeming the time, walking with wisdom towards those that are on the outside. It was mentioned the race that's going to come to an end. There's going to be that time where we won't be able to work anymore. But guess what? God has given us the work to do today. Uh, Moses in Psalm 92, Lord, teach us to number our days that we might gain a heart of wisdom. And so every day we wake up with these opportunities, these decisions. And basically the decision is, are we going to store our treasures on the earth? Are we going to do things that are going to get caught up that's just going to fade, rust, rot, thieves can come? Or are we going to be serious about storing our treasures in God's hands? Are we going to be serious about the eternally significant work that God has called us each to do? And so where does it all start? It just starts with that attitude of prayer and saying, Lord, here I am. You want to use me? Please do it. And as the Lord moves, just watch him. Watch him glorify himself. I'm addicted to it. I mean, it is, it is so much joy just watching the Lord reveal himself to other people and just getting that front row seat, the Holy Spirit moving on, folks. So may God bless you. May God give us many, many opportunities, maybe even today, maybe tomorrow. Put, put that, that radar up. Listen to the Holy Spirit moving. And as he prompts you, just do it. And we're looking forward to seeing how those testimonies are going to pour in. May God bless you.